Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Hello, welcome to our midweek service. Thank you for joining us today and being with us. Um, we are starting a new series or I don't know how, how long this will be, but we're starting a new teaching today that Pastor has been working on. He, it will eventually end up in the Understanding Covenant Manual, so that manual will actually um, be expanding just a little bit. Um, but yeah, we are excited to dive into this new teaching today. We'll start with uh, prayer. Uh, thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that your word brings increase to our understanding increase into our lives overall and we just give you all the glory and honor we thank you that you are working in our lives that you are performing miracles day by day even if we don't see what's going on behind the scenes we know that you are working and that you are the worker of those miracles and we give you all the glory and honor in jesus name we pray amen amen okay like i said so this is going into going to end up in the covenant manual and i really appreciate this teaching because um pastor walter he really truly does put hours and hours and hours into every single uh, study that he uh, puts out, every single document that he has, no matter how big or small the document it is, he puts hours and hours and hours into this, pours himself into it, pours his heart into it. And so it's really an honor to be able to teach these teachings mm -hmm. that he has spent so much time on. Um, so God is good. We are going to talk about the covenant basically of prosperity and how it started and what it means for us today as New Testament believers because uh, we really do have a covenant of prosperity with God still today and so it helps to understand where it came from and why we have it mm -hmm. and how it works in our lives. Um, the doctrine of increase in prosperity. We are not just attempting to preach or teach in the study, although both can be the outcome, we are taking the time to outline the origin of sound doctrine concerning all promises made and taught in reference to prosperity and increase that comes through our covenant with God. The promises God made to Abram, who later becomes Abraham, were all obtained even to the inclusion of his seed or offspring and carried into the gospels as well as the epistles. This allows all believers by faith to obtain prosperity and increase based on the word of God found in Holy Scripture. And I, I, I really appreciate that. It's so true. Uh, we as believers by faith can obtain the same prosperity that God promised to Abraham because of the word of God. And it's solid. It's true. You cannot change it. Mm -hmm. we gonna yeah. say no, you can't change it. You don't have to walk in it but it's available right it's foundation <clears throat> it's it's laid it's set it's established you cannot change it mm -hmm. so if you base your faith on holy scripture you can increase that is if you are not a follower of those who display what is known as the doctrines or wisdom of men who have no understanding and lack, lack patience and there are so many men out there who who uh uh who have who follow these uh these ideas mm -hmm. that like, are against scripture. Right. And uh, I know I, uh, I personally have been in churches where they teach that being poor is humble and, and it's, and then try to keep you in poverty. And, it, and it's just, it, it lacks so much truth yeah. and understanding of the scriptures. So really you have to be careful who you're listening to, who you're around. Um, even even those you 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 spend time with, you just mm -hmm. you have to be careful with what they're saying because it can affect your faith. Yeah, in Mark, <clears throat> in Mark it says this. It says, it says uh, he went about and it was talked about that he was he was healing the sick, he was raising the dead, he was giving sight to the blind, and it, then it says, to the poor the gospel was preached, and just ponder that like like to the poor it wasn't to the poor money was given because that's usually the church's response mm -hmm. is well there's poor people so the way that we help poor people is we go give poor people money but what jesus knew poor people didn't need money as much as they mm -hmm. needed the gospel mm -hmm. and so think about what's in the gospel like you said truth 
like and when you know the truth it's the truth that sets you free from every area of bondage mm -hmm. poverty and lack and not having enough is bondage right and the truth sets you free from bondage so if you're in bondage to poverty we were in bondage to what? poverty right. and lack like bad like embarrassingly so right without excuse and what we lacked was wisdom right we didn't what we lacked was the knowledge to be able to overcome that and when you know the truth and when you right. the reason that these teachings have to be so thorough and they have to be there you could say they're foundational but they pack truth right and when you when you allow yourself to be opened up to the truth of God's Word you allow the word to come in and cut you open and not to hold to old doctrines of men mm -hmm. or things that you were taught as a child or things that the church that you were raised in taught you but what does the word of god or even actually like your own teach experiences you? can experiences. hold you back you, because opinions it, it really uh like things that you've experienced uh your throughout your life aren't necessarily based on god's word right and so you have to set yourself above those that's right and out <laughs> and uh, and 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 make the and uh, make the word of God in your heart the truth, mm -hmm. the standard above anything else. That's right. And so, like you said, we we did come. You know, when we first got married, especially, we came from a a, a place of ex I would say extreme poverty. We lost everything, um, uh, even down to where we uh, a place to live, <laughs> our yeah. home. We like uh, within a couple of years, we we were homeless for yeah. a period of time, and so uh, we did go through places of extreme poverty. And I just I marvel at what God has taught us because we 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 finally learned to submit to truth. We finally learned to submit to the Word of God, and uh, and apply the principles that He taught us. Yeah, and we were faithful. To what he told us to do, Amen. we're faithful in applying and and in our faith didn't waver in what he asked us to do, and mm -hmm. because of that, he was able to increase us. Yeah, and still is. If it us. works for us, it can work for anybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we're not experiencing the fullness of prosperity yet. Right. right. Like we're on the journey, mm -hmm. right? But I want to be an example. Right. By the end of my life, I want people to to. To be able to use my name mm -hmm. and say, here's a man who followed God, who did what God instructed him to do, and who did the word. Right. And this is the result of doing the word. Exactly. And like to be an example of that. Uh, I, I, I agree with that, and I appreciate that. Um, so later on in this teaching, we will, we'll, you know, we're going to talk, Pastor has a, a section about Sarah, and, and I'm really excited about that. I don't think we'll get to that today, but maybe next time hey, we'll teach on that. Little hook. <laughs> you got to tune back in. <laughs> yeah, because she had to, uh, she had to have faith in God as well to be able to, to mm -hmm. uh, carry out the promise that he had for them as well. So um, be careful who you follow is what we left off at. If you are not, so you can increase if you are not a follower of those who display what is known as the doctrines or wisdom of men who have no understanding and lack patience. They have no endurance and base their teaching on how things appear that often contradict the promises of God. Therefore, they have no ability to receive from God in this area and teach others to believe like they do, making abundant increase impossible. This teaching will disprove the doctrines of men and allow the one willing, the believer, to pursue increase in a well-balanced and healthy way so this is the origin of the promises of prosperity let us remember that in genesis chapter 12 1 through 4 god seeks covenant with abram who then becomes abraham we know that again let us also remember some of the main building blocks of covenant one of the main principles of covenant was an agreement seen in a series of promises made and entered into by both parties seeking covenant and if you haven't yet well after this teaching gets added to the book, I would then wait for this to be in it. But get the book on Understanding Covenant that this will be in because Pastor lays out in a way that is so easy to understand how covenant works mm -hmm. and why it works that way. So, oh my. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> Sophie's right by the, the, the uh, phone. So if it falls over, it's the dog's fault. Um, 
But one, one, <laughs> one of the main principles of covenant was an agreement seen in the series of promises made and entered into by both parties seeking covenant. God offers protection, increase, and preservation that is upheld by his word, which becomes a requirement that God is bound to and cannot be broken when the conditions of covenant or the promises are met by the one who has entered into covenant with him. Which, which That's really cool when you think about it because God's covenant, then uh, his promises are a requirement held together by his word. Uh, he, he's bound to it and he cannot break it. Mm -hmm. He cannot break his covenant, his promise to us because it's bound by his word. Right by the covenant he he entered into now uh the the stipulation is that we uphold our end right of that covenant in order for that to 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 become a reality in our yeah. life but think about how abraham came to god mm -hmm. he would come to god and he'd be like to me you've given no seed mm -hmm. like he'd lay it out and not not in a vengeful you know spiteful way right but there's two sides the covenant right and so we don't have to come to god as like god please, please pay my bills. Right. He already promised he would provide for your need. Right. right. We don't have to come to God. That's what one thing that we really want to lock in as we teach on this and from the perspective of covenant is that in the same way, like if you promise me something, if you're like, hey, if you go mow the yard, then I'll make you apple dumplings. <laughs> Guaranteed when I come in, I'm not going to be like, um, would, would would you like I'm not tiptoeing like would, would, would you mind making apple dumplings like if it's not too much or too and I'm like where's my apple dumplings right because you gave me your word mm -hmm. and so when we we don't necessarily fully understand the significance of covenant being in the you know Americans in the Western mindset so when you when you read this teaching understand this covenant is like this is a done deal right Abraham saw this as this was not just that God was good to his word. He was good to his covenant. And this was this was a done deal. Right. Well, it, you know, from speaking of an American perspective or a Western perspective. And apple dumplings. <laughs> uh, it'd be similar to a contract. Mm -hmm. When we enter into a contract, say to buy a house, we're now obligated by the terms of that contract. Yeah. And if we break that contract, then the... We'll take the house. ...person building the house, whoever we entered in that contract with, will then either come after us for our part of the money that mm -hmm. we promised them or they then take the house back. Mm -hmm. And so that that's the way that covenant works. We're bound by contract with this, that's good. this covenant that we've entered into with God. Now God is faithful and we know that he's never going to break his end of the contract. Now it's right. up to us. What is our part? Man must offer to be or show obedience to honor God and believe and trust in God and his word fully at all times. That's us. That's on us to do. We have to trust in God and his word fully at all times. Yeah. Uh, so what was God looking for when he was pursuing Abram as a covenant partner? Or you might say, what did God know about Abram that made him a promising prospect for covenant? Also, Abram was not a perfect man even when he change his name to Abraham. He was not perfect. Mm -hmm. I can safely say that no one is flawless except for Jesus, our Savior. Yeah. So overall, what God is looking for in the believer is the condition of his heart that speaks of his potential to serve God faithfully. Uh, we're going to read Genesis chapter 12. Uh, this is Genesis 12 verses 1 through 4. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So just in those first two verses, mm -hmm. you see instruction to Abraham. That's his part. Mm -hmm. Go get out. Mm -hmm. And then I'll show you. And then he's, God's promise is if you'll do that, then I'll make you a great nation. Right. And it's interesting because this is before covenant was cut. Right. Uh, and the pastor points that out this out in the document, too. I believe we'll get to that. But whenever he's referred to as Abram, that was before covenant was cut. Once mm -hmm. he's referred to as Abraham, they've now entered into that yeah. covenant and then verse 3 god continues to say i will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee and then these shall all families of the earth be blessed and so abram departed as the lord had spoken unto him and lot went with him and abram was 75 years old when he departed well, that's interesting isn't it 75 years old when that first happened so notice god speaks to abram and tells him to leave his father's house 
and his country and from all his family members unto a land that I will show you. That's God's words. In other words, follow these instructions. It's going to take the obedience of faith, which he displayed in verse 4, although not perfectly. Yeah, he still had a lot with him. <laughs> yeah, and God, in verse 2, God makes a series of promises saying, I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, make your name great, and you will be a blessing. These phrases captured in these promises are the very essence of the purpose of increase and prosperity for the believer. The phrase, and you will be a blessing... This is interesting. I like this part. Means that you will increase others. In other words, you will become a giver and enrich others. Now mm -hmm. that's it's one thing to be blessed and have everything that you need met and more than enough, but it's a whole nother level when you're able to then enrich other people's lives and yeah. be a blessing to them. And that's part of this promise right. that he will be a blessing to other people. Yeah. Well, Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Right. And th truly, like, if you've ever been able to be a blessing to somebody, they're, like, they're getting, you know, they're getting the benefit. They're getting the blessing. They're getting the thing, whatever that is, right? But how good does it feel, mm -hmm. right? Like, it just feels good to be able to be a blessing to somebody. Mm -hmm. And that's ultimately the entire reason for prosperity. It's not to go build a house on a mountain somewhere. Right. It's to it's to advance the kingdom of God. And that's first and foremost. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't have a house up on a mountain somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's just what has God called you to do? Because you'll be able to do it so much better from a place of abundance. And you will not be able to do it as well from a place of lack. Mm -hmm. So blessed to be a blessing. Yeah. So we see this principle carried out in the New Testament. Um did you want to read that scripture? I in do. Luke 6, 38? That's my job. <laughs> it says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. So in verse 3 of Genesis chapter 12, we see God's promises of preservation for him and his offspring, saying, I will bless them that bless them, bless you, and curse them that curse you. And in you will all the family of the earth be blessed. This is not just a history lesson. It is a promise that extends into the New Testament left to be entered into by the believer today, as we see in Galatians 3, 6 through 9, which I, I'm, I'm entering into that promise. That's, that's for me too. Amen. Uh, even This is Galatians 3, 6 through 9 says, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. That's me. That's us. Glory I'm be to faith. God. I'm blessed with faithful Abraham. Yeah. I like how Pastor points out, it's not just a history. This isn't just like, hey, look how good Abraham had. Right. It's not just what happened in the past. Right. It actually means something for us today. For those who are of faith. Mm -hmm. uh, notice it mentions the word blessed a couple of times, not only in this portion of scripture, but also in Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 4. We must understand the concept of the word blessed to a de greater degree, because when God blesses you, you are increased. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it doesn't mean you reach a level and you stay there. You're increasing continues. Yeah, that's good. Increase. If you're always increasing, then you're always increasing, mm -hmm. right? Like that's, I think sometimes people think like, well, when I get a million dollars, then I'll, then I'll be able to give. But you give with a dollar, right? You can give with $5. You can give when your paycheck is 500 a week. You know, mm -hmm. it's not, prosperity is, uh, Genesis tells us this. It says that Abraham became rich. Mm -hmm. It's not go get rich quick. The covenant is when you follow God and you follow the plan and you follow the Holy Ghost, that God will make you rich. God right. will increase you. Become you become great. You become great. Increase <clears throat> continues. So we must understand the concept of the word bless. Oh, I just read that. But I'll read it again. To a greater degree, because when God blesses you, you are increased. For Proverbs 10.22 says the This is my scripture. Oh, okay, 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 go ahead. This is actually one of my favorite scriptures, so you have to let me read it. Go ahead. Sorry. Right. I didn't realize that. I thought it was a quote. but It says, The blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. <laughs> the Amphite says, Neither does toiling increase it. Mm -hmm. That's good. 
So the blessings bring on prosperity. When you view Genesis 12, 1 through 4 and compare it to Galatians 3, 6 through 9, you will understand that through the blessings, we are promised increase. But not only that, with the blessings comes a prosperous life that includes happiness and stability. 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 <laughs> stability concerning our homes and families because we choose to follow the Lord. And how crucial is that element when it comes to your prosperity? Because right. if you are not if you don't have a stable home life, if you don't have a home to, that you can go to home to where you feel the peace and joy of the Lord, then what are you doing? You don't, yeah, no you don't no get money enjoy. in the world yeah. will, will bring you what you need if you don't have your home life in order. Uh, and, and, and it's not impossible to do. It's not, even if your home life currently is not in order, it is not impossible yeah, you uh, can believe God for that. That's it's not part impossible of, to change that. That's part of full prosperity. Like right. true prosperity is your mind, your will, mm -hmm. your emotions, your relationships, and your body. Right. That's it, every area of right. your life. It, the change starts with the, the individual in the home who was willing to submit to the word, who was willing to submit to truth and, and take that higher road, take the higher standard in their life. Uh, and it's not an easy road to take, uh, especially if both parties aren't on that page, same page. But it is possible to bring peace into your home by submitting to the truth of the Word of God and submitting to His promises, even if it means that you're sacrificing yeah. your own desires and, and, and wants because uh, uh, God's promises are true. And, and no matter how much you sacrifice, uh, God will bring the increase back into your yeah. life. I've heard a very wise man say repeatedly that he would rather have peace in his home than mm. to be right. Right? Yeah. To you don't need a win argument. Man, we just had a great <laughs> we just had a great marriage <laughs> you know, sessions of you know, the past couple of weeks of, of uh, the Thursday night, right? right the midweek yeah, yeah. service. So mm -hmm. man, if you've got strife in any relationship, just don't be the stubborn one. Mm -hmm. Be the one who who is pliable and bendable and and seek that peace because it, if you have a lot of money but all your relationships are terrible mm -hmm. there's no that's not prosperity that's just money with a whole lot of problems mm -hmm. right if you have if you have really good health but you don't have money or you have a lot of money but you have bad health that's not complete prosperity right complete prosperity includes the whole package everything that god promised us that's right it, it is is what brings us true prosperity yeah not just financial increase but increase in all areas of our lives where you're satisfied and you're full and and you're enjoying your life because well uh, is it psalms Yep. 91 says, with, with long life, life satisfy you and, and show you my salvation. I really hope that's the case. I'm really working hard at remembering details <laughs> like yeah. that. But uh, with long life, will I satisfy you? And, and if you're not satisfied, uh, then there's something that you're not. And, and the stipulation is that, that you seek him first. You put him right. first in all that you do. And if you're not, promise. if there's something that's off, that change. Up. If there's something that's off, then either you change or believe God for change. But both of those are faith actions. So you can believe, if you can't necessarily dictate to a person how they're going to treat you, but you can believe God that he works on them. All right, go. I found it. I found it. I was right. It's Psalm 91, verse 16. But I'm going to start with verse 14 and read 14 through 15 because that's where that prompt, that's why that 14 starts with, how that promise comes to be because he has set his love upon me therefore i will de will i deliver him i will set him on high because he hath known my name because he has set his love upon me that's where it starts because he has set his love upon me and because we have known his name mm. these things will happen i will deliver him i will set him on high he shall call upon me and i will answer him i will be with him in trouble i will deliver him and honor him with long life will i satisfy him and show him my salvation and so that's because you love God and you put right. him first in all that you do when you know when you him. you see the covenant action there, mm -hmm. right? You see the, you see the, the interaction mm -hmm. of man and humanity mm -hmm. reaching out to God and like understanding who you are in Christ. Like we are the righteousness of, of God. Like his love has been shed abroad upon us, right? So you're, 
you're seeing that interaction between God and man. Mm -hmm. And then, like, just all of the benefits that come from a relationship. Right. If you're in a relationship with a prosperous person, you're going to benefit from their prosperity, mm -hmm. right? If you're, if you're in a relationship with a, a medical doctor, you're going to benefit from, you know, you have nursing friends that you benefit from because mm -hmm. they know stuff, right? <laughs> so it's just understanding that being in covenant with God, he is the, the, the greatest, he is the greatest, he, he is the great I am, right? Like there is no higher authority. There's right. no higher power. Right. If you're going to be in covenant with someone. <laughs> you might as well start at the top. Okay, uh, so we're going to continue. We probably get through another page, one more page at least. We have about five minutes left. So in Genesis chapter 12, 5 through 7, we see that Abram took Sarah, or Sarai, which was his wife, and Lot, his brother, or I'm sorry, that was his brother's son, and all their belongings. This would later become a problem for Abram. Remember, he was told to leave his kindred, any family member behind, which shows he wasn't perfect. He did make mistakes along the way. So he was told, like you <laughs> said, he took Lot with him. He was told to leave his, uh, his, his family. That didn't mean his wife. It meant his, any other family member. So he took Lot, his brother's son, with him, which is going to be his, what's going to cause him problems. He finally ended up in Canaan, where the Canaanites lived where God appeared to him and gave him another promise saying to him, so even after he made a mistake, unto your offspring I give this land. And there Abram built an altar unto the Lord as an act of honor and respect, a place of worship. This is before he had any offspring, uh, but he still had a promise here. Why is this so important? Because Abram was showing himself to be faith or obedient, faithful, respectful, able to endure patiently, and full of faith even in the most difficult situations. Many think that Abraham's life is just a history lesson because they struggle with the concept of prosperity, not realizing that God is looking for those he can prosper, those who meet the inward conditions of the heart as Abraham did by faith. So we're going to read. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 10 through 15 says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, as he has patiently endured, he obtained the promise. <clears throat> From this point forward, hopefully we can all see that prosperity can become a reality even in the most difficult times for anyone who chooses to honor covenant by faith in Jesus Christ, our substitute. And I think this is where we'll pause in the document because we only have a couple minutes left. Um, and then it, it does, this will teaching will continue with Abram and the journey he went on and what they, how they um, by faith received the promises of God for their life. Which I'm really excited about those parts. I've really those parts really um, ministered to me while we were while I was helping Pastor put his thoughts on paper. Amen. So God is good. Um, yeah. Is there anything you wanted to add? No. Nope. Slow the class out a little <laughs> early tonight. <laughs> you get two minutes back of your <laughs> night tonight. Uh, <laughs> we love you guys. Thank you for joining with joining with us. That works. <laughs> and being with us tonight. And uh, we pray that you guys have a blessed week and we will see you Sunday morning. Bye. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.